Hello and welcome to another LeetCode video. Today we're going to be working on search in a rotated sorted array. And I actually think this is probably my favorite binary search problem in all of LeetCode. I think it's very good. There's a ton of edge cases and if you know this one then you should be able to do like medium binary search problems. So let's take a read. So essentially we have a numbers array. It's sorted in ascending, ascending order and it could be rotated meaning as you can see in this case, it's actually rotated. So like instead of instead of being 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, it's actually rotated a bit. So it starts at some point in the middle of the array, but then the rest of it is sorted. So like it goes like this and then kind of like wraps around. And the same thing for this one. And this is only one number. But essentially what we're asked is we're asked to return a some target and then it can either be in the array or not. And we need to figure out how to do this. So in this first example, this target is actually index four, so we return four. Second example, it's not there, so we return negative one. And third example, it's not there, so we return negative one. Okay. So we're gonna break this problem down into two steps. And the first step is going to be, how do we get a solution if, like let's say this isn't rotated. So let's just say it's like zero, one, two, four, five, six, seven. And we're looking for zero. So this, you should be able to do how to do. It's just a, like as simple of a binary search problem as it gets, right? You just declare a left over here, you declare a right over here, and you do a binary search. You look for the target, right? So you just get a pivot value, and then you say like, okay, our pivot, is it greater or less than zero? If it's greater, that means we're gonna wanna delete this part of the binary search and we'll move on to here. If it's less, we move on to the other part. So once that part's deleted, the right moves over here, the right's over here, our pivot value now becomes a one. Is this greater or less than zero? It is greater, so we're gonna delete this part. Now the right's gonna come over here and then we finally find our element, right? So pretty straightforward binary search. So now that we know that, we know how to do that pretty easily, but how do we actually transform our problem? Because we are asked to do this in a log n. So how do we transform that problem into this problem, right? So now let's try to do the same thing with this. Like, is there any way to do a binary search even? What constraints could we do, right? We're looking for zero. Well, let's just say we get some random pivot value like this and we're like, okay, well, we don't know if it's rotated yet. For all you know, this could be four, five, six, seven, and then the zero could be over here, but also it could also be like over here, right? So you have no idea what part of the array to delete because of that rotation. So the rotation is what makes it tricky. And we're gonna try to figure out how do we simplify that rotation? Like what do we actually need to do? And so it turns out with the rotation, there are actually only two base cases, or there's two cases. One of the cases is if there is a rotation. So let's go through that first. So if there is a rotation, what we actually need to find is we don't need to look for the number. We need to look for the smallest number in the array. We're going to need to look for this. So in, in this case, we are looking for the zero, which is the target, but you know, our target could be like six. Let's say our target is six. And the first thing we're going to look for is the smallest number in the array, because let's say we do have this, right? If we do have this, then we know that like, we can just say, okay, we can get the subarray here and then we can get the subarray here. And then we can just say like, okay, which one is our number in? So for example, here, if we just get, like this number and then the last number in the array, then we know kind of like what numbers are possible to be in this part of the array because this part is sorted and this part is also sorted, right? Both of these are sorted. So we can just figure out like once we have this index, we also have this index and we have the zero index and we have the end index. And from there we can figure out like where the six is. Is it in here or is it in here? And in this case, we'd figure out, okay, so this part of the array is from four to seven. So the six has to be in here, assuming it's sorted, right? It can't be in the other part. So that's one case. And let's let's just, this is gonna be like the hard case. So let's figure out how we do this, right? Like, let's say there is a rotation. How do we find the zero with a binary search? So the way it's gonna work is you're gonna actually have a left pointer over here and you're gonna have a right pointer over here. And let's say we do get some random pivot value like this value here. The thing about a rotation is if there is a rotation, there's only two cases. And the pivot value, we're, we're always going to be comparing, normally we compare it to like the left and the right, but in this case, we're actually going to compare it to the zero element in the array. And there's two cases. So this number is either going to be bigger or it's going to be smaller because it's guaranteed to be unique. So if you think about it, if it's bigger and there was a rotation, that means this part 
has to be ascending, right? This part has to be ascending. And then eventually there's some, like, there's some decrease somewhere else. So essentially we're saying if this part was ascending, that means we haven't yet reached our rotation index, which is going to be the smallest number in the array. This part has to be ascending. So if this is bigger than the zero element, then we know we can cross this out. And we know that our rotation index has to be here. Similarly, let's say our pivot was, you know, obviously we're not going to get this value, but let's say our pivot was over here somehow. Since this pivot is smaller than this value, that means this had to be like increasing, 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 and then we had a drop, right? Because the array is sorted. So to have the drop, then when you have the drop, that's when you have your smallest number. Because if you look, right, it's increasing, 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 drop, and then keeps increasing. There's only one place where the number drops. So we're, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that drop. So if this number is smaller than the left, then we have that drop. And that means this could be the rotation index. It's possible. But if you think about it, we can just look for all the places that are a valid rotation index and just take the leftmost one, right? So we're going to look for every number that's smaller than four, and we're going to take the leftmost one. So we're going to say like, okay, let's just say this is the rotation index for now. We're going to still cross out this section and we're going to look over here. Is there a value that's smaller than this in this section? And if there is, we're going to update our rotation index to that. So let's actually go through like this whole, like, let's just go through what this would look like for this. So initially our pivot would be seven, right? It would just be the middle value. So we would say, okay, is the seven greater than the four? Yes, it is. It's greater than the four, meaning we haven't yet hit our drop. So our rotation and we'll just we're going to set our rotation index. Let's call that I. We're going to set that equal to infinity because we are trying to minimize that. So if we're trying to minimize a good thing to do in binary search for the value you're looking for, you set it infinity and then you try to minimize it. And then that's how you would do that. So now we that we hit the seven. The seven is greater than the four. That means our rotation index has to be somewhere over here, right? Because if this is increasing, we haven't hit our drop. So now we're going to say, OK, since this is greater, we're going to get rid of all this. We are going to get rid of this pivot. And now this is going to be now our new left value is going to be over here, right? We got rid of all that. OK, now we are going to look for another rotation index. So our pivot is actually going to be over here and we're going to get a one and we're going to say, OK, is that greater or or less than the four? Well, it's less than. So this could possibly be the smallest number. And it can be, right? Like if we just get rid of the zero, if we just have four, five, six, seven, one, two, then one's the smallest number. So it's possible. So we're going to take this index and we're going to record it. So we're going to no longer get this infinity. We're trying to minimize it. So we're going to say, what is this index? This is zero, one, two, three, four, five, I think. Yeah. So we're going to say this is five, but we're trying to minimize the number that is smaller than four, right? Because if you look, if, if there is a rotation, if you try to minimize, if you try to minimize the index of the number that's smaller than four, all of these numbers are smaller than four and the smallest index is always the one that's going to be the rotation index. If there is a rotation, you can draw it out in a bunch of ways, but essentially that's what you're trying to do. So we're going to say, okay, we're going to store this value, but now we need to try to minimize it. So we're actually going to look over here. So we are still going to delete this right side and we're going to look over here. And now our right value is here and our pivot is going to be this value here. Now we're going to say, okay, is this value smaller than four? Could this possibly be our min value? You could also, the other thing you could do is you could just like keep checking. You could record a min value. That would also be fine. But because you want an index, you're guaranteed that if you just try to minimize the index, you're going to get the, you're going to get the uh, smallest value. If you wanted to get like the, the min value in the array, instead of the index, you would store the value and you could try to minimize it that way. But we actually want the index of the min value. So here, this is also a valid rotation index because it's smaller than four. And what's the index here? So the index is four, which is less than five. And we're trying to minimize that index. Okay, so now we are going to have an index four, which is going to give us the zero. And then from there, we can easily do the rest of our code. We can just say, okay, let's just take the values in four to whatever the length of the, this array is. So four to six, right? And let's take the values in zero to three, the other array, and let's just figure out where is our target? Is our target in this part or this part? And then from there, we just do one more binary search, which is just a normal linear binary search in a sorted array, right? We're either gonna binary search in here or in here, depending on our target. So that part is pretty straightforward, and that's what I showed earlier. Now there is one edge case that's pretty tricky to come up with. And this is the one I'm going to show you now. So let's say our, let's say our array was actually completely sorted to begin with. So if we just have like zero, one, two, 
four, five, six, seven, and we do what we were doing here, this isn't gonna work because if we get some pivot value, like let's say we get this value here. So actually the value we're looking for is over here, right? That's the smallest value. But if we get the pivot value and we compare it to zero and we say like, oh, that value is greater. That means we haven't yet done our rotation. The rotation has to be somewhere over here. Well, it was actually this one here. So that's the only exception is if the array is already sorted, there isn't gonna be a rotation in the middle. So you do have to check, like, is this whole array sorted? And it's pretty straightforward to do that. You can just check this value and this value. And then if they are the same, the only way they can be the same is if you have a one number array. So if you have like this, they're gonna be the same and that's your rotation index. Or if this value is smaller than this value, so if this left is smaller than this right, right as you're smaller, that means that you actually never rotated it. Because if you look in all your rotations, the left is actually bigger than the right. In a multi-number array, it's guaranteed to be bigger. Because you go up, 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 drop, and then you go up, 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 up again. But they're all unique, so, th so this number has to be bigger if there is a rotation index. So that's the edge case you have to look for. And you, we can check for this first. And if we check for this first and we do notice, then we can say our rotation index is here and we don't have to do the first binary search. Then we can just search through this whole array to get our answer, right? So we could do that as well. Okay, so now we have enough to code. So let's write down our steps one more time. So our steps is gonna be one, find a rotation index in the array with binary search. Two, figure out what subarray the target has to be in. And three, binary search that subarray for it. And if it's there, return it, otherwise return negative one. And in this case, we would just, uh, we would, there would only be one subarray, but well, I'm gonna show you how that's gonna work. Okay, so now we have pretty much everything we need to code it up. So let's actually start coding it up. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make this bigger. There we go. So what do we need first? We need to actually get like the numbers. So what are you gonna say? Let's just make the left and right equal to, uh, let's just make them equal to like, gives them some initial value. So let's just say there's zero and, cause we're gonna use them later. So let's just initialize them. So let's just say length nums minus one. Now we need to check for the case that the list is already sorted. And we also need to make declare rotation index value. So let's do that. So let's just say rotation index equals infinity. Start off because we're trying to minimize it. So infinity. And then we're going to check if the list is already sorted by if nums zero is less than the last number, less than or equal to, because you could have a length list one and that would take care of it for you. Then our rotation index is just going to be zero. Otherwise, we need to actually get it. So then we need to do this binary search. So we can say while left is less than or equal to right, you're gonna get a pivot as always equals left plus right. And if you were doing this in like C, you could do it another way. You're never gonna have overflow in Python, so I don't have to worry about it luckily, but you could also write that another way to not ensure for overflow. Okay, so now essentially we need to be checking what is our pivot value compared to the initial value, right? So we could say if the nums pivot is less than num zero, this is a valid rotation index, right? That means we've already done like our drop. So then we need to record it. So we're gonna say rotation index equals min, copy paste that. And then we are going to minimize that with the pivot, right? We're trying to get the leftmost index of the number that's greater than the left number. And that's always gonna be a rotation index, assuming there is a rotation. Okay, and then, so if that's the case, if that's the case, then we are trying to go left, right? So if we're trying to go left, that means we have to do right equals pivot minus one. And otherwise, so if our number is bigger, that means we still haven't done the drop. That means like on something like, you know, five, six, seven, one, two, we're still on like the six or seven where we haven't done the drop. That means we have to go right. And so if we have to go right, we do left equals pivot plus one. Okay, so now that we have a guaranteed rotation index, either from here or from here, what we can do is we can figure out like what subarray our thing is in. 
And so the way to do that with using both of these, the easiest way to do it is just, let's just check if it's in the, the array, including the rotation index, and that would take care of both of our cases. Because if our array is sorted like this and our rotation index is one, then we're gonna check, is it in this array? And if our array is rotated, then we're gonna check, is it in this array? And either way, we're gonna, like either way, we're, we're not gonna have to check the other one if it's already sorted, because if it's already sorted, it's guaranteed to be in the first one. So now we're gonna reset our left and our right here for the second binary search. So we're gonna say if, um, and so the target needs to be in between nums rotation index is less than or equal to target. It could be equal, we haven't checked that yet. It's less than or equal to nums minus one, right? And like I said, you're either gonna have this case where that would work, or you're gonna have this case where that would also work. You're checking this part of the array or this whole array. So either one works. So I'll just comment that out to leave that for later. So if that's the case, then what should our left and our right be? So our left and our right should be the rotation index and the last number in the array. So length nums minus one, right? For both of these cases. So for this case, it's, it's gonna be zero and then this number. And then for this case, it's gonna be whatever the rotation index was and the last number as well. Otherwise, we are in this case where our number is in this range. And then what is our left and our right there? So it's actually gonna be zero. And then it's gonna be rotation index minus one. And so now that we have our left and our right, now we just simply do a binary search. I'm actually gonna copy some of this. Um, it's gonna be similar. So I'm gonna copy some of this and then we are going to change some variables around. So now this is pretty much just a normal binary search in a sorted array. So if nums pivot equals the target, then we just wanna return the pivot, right? We wanna return the index where it appears. And then we have another if statement. So if nums pivot, let's just say is greater than the target, that means we need to go left, right? Like in a sorted array, let's say we're here and we are at five and we're looking for a three, we need to go left. So to go left, you would do right equals pivot minus one. Let's Base here. Otherwise, it's left equals pivot plus one. Now, finally, when you, if you go through this entire loop and you didn't find our number, we found the range that it has to be in. That means it's guaranteed not to be in here. So we can just return negative one as a default. Okay. And like I said, this has a ton of bugs. Uh, it's very easy to make bugs. So let's just hope we didn't. Well, looks like we did. Looks like we have a time limit exceeded actually. Yeah. Okay, so for one thing that I'm seeing right away is I'm using left and right and L and R. And so I'm actually going to just replace. So this is kind of a nice trick. You can just replace rights with R's and you can replace lefts with L's. Just hit replace all and that does it really quick for you. So let's try that and see if we have anything else. Okay, actually, I would be pretty shocked if it's submitted right away to be honest. Okay, so what's successful? So we can actually look at um, like how it did. So you can see it's pretty efficient. And let's go through the time and space complexity now. Make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Okay, so for the time and space complexity, let's add some more space again. Okay, so in this first array, we either get a number right away, which is O of one, or we have to do a binary search, which is log n, right? Then in the second one, we have to do a binary search again. So we're essentially doing two binary searches through through the same array. So it would be like two log n, which is just uh, which is just log n, right? And for the space, what are we doing here? So we just declared a left and a right, and we declared a rotation index, but we didn't actually make any new variables. So, and then once again, we just change, reassign those. So we didn't actually make an array or anything. So it's actually gonna be O of one. But yeah, I think this is a really good problem. Um, that edge case is definitely hard to find. I think if you've never done this problem, it's probably one you're gonna run into with the array being sorted to begin with. But this is definitely good practice for a binary search. Like I think if you could do this one, you could do most medium problems. And I guess it's still like a really, yeah. So I guess this is why it's like super, super common interview question. So I'd definitely make sure you know this one very well. I think it's uh, quite, good, quite good for sure. Okay, but uh, if you like this video, please like it. Hopefully you did. Hopefully I explained everything well. And please subscribe to the channel. It really helps grow it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.